Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. This week I'm going to be showing you how to design a marble maze in FreeCAD because Joseph Prusa made it this week's contest. So grab a beverage and join me at the computer. So before we jump into FreeCAD, let's generate a maze. I'm using this uh, maze generator right here. I'll link it down below in the description. So I'll click here and I want a fairly small maze for my demo. So I'm just going to go four by four. And it's a square maze, as you can see right here. And let's go new maze. And you know what? I really like that one. I think it looks sharp. Go back to uh, FreeCAD, like always, create new. And the next thing we want to do is go to our part design workbench. So there we go. And like always, we need to create a new body, this icon. And the next thing you want to do is create a new sketch. I want to sketch things from top down this time. So make sure top is selected on our navigation box. And of course, this icon right here, first sketch, clicky. And here's the plane I want to sketch on. Well, let's just bring this uh, model in so we have it as a reference. Beautiful. This edit controls within your sketch has the option to turn on a grid, and that's what we want to do. And I know what you're saying. The constraint guy wants to use a grid. Well, this is one of the few times that a grid comes in very handy. Now, we need to figure out which grid size we're going to use. So in our case, we have our marble. We want to give it a little bit of an offset because if it's too tight, it won't roll. And we need enough room for the walls. And I've just drawn a TIE fighter. Pew, pew, pew. So in my case, I'm going to be using a 14 mil marble. And I want about one mil of clearance. So that brings me to 15. And I also want two walls which are about 2.4 millimeters, which will bring us to about 19.8. So in my case, I'm just gonna leave this grid at 20. Nice round numbers, I like round numbers. Enter. So this is the perfect opportunity to use one of the free CAD 20's new commands. Right here, underneath our uh, square command, this guy right here, click over to the side and drop down and go to, and go down to centered rectangle. Right here. And we wanna pick the middle point. So make sure the middle's highlighted like this, not the vertical line, not the horizontal line, but the midpoint. And now we can just simply extend and notice how we're not snapping. Well, turn your grid snap on right here. And now when we approach, we should snap. So that will give us a four by four beauty. But we wanna add a little bit of extra room here for the wall. So in order to keep things square, I'm gonna apply a constraint, equal constraint between these two lines, which is this guy right here. So click on him. Now you can click here, click here. And you can see right there, the equals 11 and the equals 11 right here. Next, I'm going to apply a horizontal constraint right here. There you go. Apply them right there. And I'm going to make them 82.4. Since my wall thickness is going to be 1.4, I wanted that 1.4 offset close this up and let's pad this guy out click pad and this time i don't want him that thick so i'm just going to say 2.4 and more importantly i want to pad this in a reverse direction so instead of padding this up i want to pad this down so just click reverse right down here Clicky OK. 
And there is a madness to my method here. So let's put this guy into a nice view like this. By padding down, it means I can now draw in the upwards direction, but I can use the plane as opposed to sketching on top of the surface. This makes our model a lot stronger. Of course, the way I'll do this is I'll just create my top here. Go back to sketch. This guy right here, looky. And I can select this plane again right here. Once again, we're going to have to create a grid. I want my grid snap on this time and 20 again. When you activate a grid inside a sketch like this, it's just native to that sketch, which means you could actually have different grids in different sketches for your application, which is a really, really cool tool. So the next thing I want to do is sketch out the maze here using construction lines. So to do that, I gotta go to this icon right here. This guy, clicky, and you'll notice that these have all turned blue from white. That means we're in construction mode. So I want to use this tool right here, which is our create polyline. Click. And now I want to find a starting point. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to work counterclockwise. So with my grid snap on, I should just be able to click and I'll go to my next guy, click. And now I'll go all the way down here, click. And of course, over key. Now click escape that will cancel it out. I'll draw the next line. So let's say start here and go to here, clicky to cancel. And now next one, let's start here. We'll go all the way over here, escape to cancel up here to down here, escape. And when we're on this guy, next we'll go here. We'll go over, we'll go up, over, Escape, and now let's just go here and down. And our last guy will go from here to here. And there is our maze outline. It matches what we have down here. And of course, there is, it is solvable. So let's just run through the maze real quick. Yep, we're good to go. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to constrain all of these that way they can't be moved or edited because I'm going to be drawing essentially around them. So here you can see that I have uh, 17 degrees of freedom. And the way we want to constrain that is if I scroll down here, click on my first line, click on my last line while holding shift when they're all selected, I'm going to apply this guy here, the constraint blocker. So click here. And you will see everything is now light blue. And if I scroll up here, I can see that my sketch is fully constrained. So now that we have everything prepared, we don't really need that uh, model in a corner anymore. Let's go back to our normal view here. And to make the next step easier, I will close down the sketch. I'm going to select the pad. I'm going to hit spacebar just to hide it. That way, when I go back into the sketch, all I have is my model here. And at this point, you want to turn off your grid snap. And I'm also going to turn off show grid. That way I have this nice clean image right here. So next let's go back to uh, normal line mode from construction mode. So click this icon right here. And of course we want to select our polyline again. Now I want to pick a starting point. So in my case, I'm going to start with this guy right here and just click off to the side of this line here. So right here, and I'm just outlining it. So as I go around and I'm just going to go over and I want this as straight as possible. So if we're fairly straight, you'll see the automatic constraint click in. So when I click here, see this guy right there. That tells me that the horizontal constraint was automatically applied. So 
So I'll click down here. And again, if we go back, see our uh, vertical constraint was automatically applied. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around my first model. Now, when you get to your last point, if you're careful and you manage to click just on that dot right there, you'll notice that the command will automatically end. And that's a good thing. And if you've missed your auto constraints, so your line's not straight, you can of course just apply it manually. So first we'll do our vertical constraint. Beauty. And next we'll do our horizontal constraint. This guy right here. Click. Now for this to work, you'll have to be very careful. You'll have to make sure that every line has a vertical constraint or a horizontal constraint since they're all at 90 degree angles. And in this case, they do. So the next thing we're going to do is, of course, outline this guy right here, the other side. Select polyline tool and just go around like last time. So once we have everything outlined, we now need to add a dimension for an offset between our reference lines and our main sketch lines here, our wall thicknesses. So we'll do that by using the horizontal and the vertical constraint. So let's find a place to start. I personally really like this corner right here. That's kind of my 12 o'clock position and we'll just go clockwise all around. So for the first position, I need to add two constraints. So I'm going to add my horizontal first. So I'm going to say I want the difference from here and this corner right here. In our case, we said our wall thickness is gonna be uh, 1.2. So just click that. So we're gonna go here for our vertical distance next. Click here, and then back on this one right here. And again, 1.2. And you can see that it's uh, set the distance here, so now, this distance is set up and this distance is set up. So as we go around, I'll add my horizontal here. From here to here. And again, 1.2. And you can see that this guy's gone green, that he's fully constrained. And if we're doing this properly, you will see the one just after the point you've worked on will always go green. So if you go down here, you can see we already applied the horizontal constraint. So we want a vertical constraint right here. This guy, click here and select here, 1.2. And just like before, the line's gone green. So now you just have to remember that we already applied a vertical constraint right here. So our next constraint is gonna be a horizontal right there. And we'll continue going around, but there is a couple of little things I want to show you that you might run into. Uh, the first one is if you select a command such as my vertical constraint here, if you miss the dot right there and you click on the line length by accident, this is what will happen. As you can see, it's selected the length of the line. So you're not going point to point. It's you're going end to end. Now, the second problem you might run into is you'll notice that we already have a horizontal constraint from this point to this point. Well, if I select another horizontal constraint and click here and go to this guy, you'll notice everything will go orange. And just over here, it says we have redundant constraints. Since this point is constrained to this point, it already knows that this point has to be 1.2 millimeters away from this point. 
because it's a vertical line, it automatically knows that this point here has to be 1.2 millimeters away from here. So setting that twice will make it a redundant constraint. I'm going to continue this on in uh, hyperspeed. And you'll notice that when I get to the end, all of these are now green and they're fully constrained. The one thing that I did notice doing this is on my first point, I added two. So a horizontal constraint and a vertical constraint. And then my second one, I went vertical. Then the next constraint was horizontal and I would alternate between vertical and horizontal mode. So. If you're doing this next time and you want to, if you're doing it right, if you find that each point you're having to switch, it means you're on the right track. Good job. So I'm going to do the same for my other side here. Pick a point to start working at. So I'll just grab this point right here. I'll apply a horizontal first. Constraint that is. And then I'll apply the vertical. Constraint next. 1.2. And then, of course, I'll switch the horizontal to get this next point. 1.2. You can see it's gone green, which is good. And let's see if my theory is right. Vertical next. 1.2. And next one should be horizontal. And I've just made that boo boo. So we could just cancel. By this guy and this guy, 1.2, and yeah, looks like my theory holds up. You alternate horizontal and your vertical. Anyways, I'm gonna hyperspeed through this process here since you've seen it before. And beautiful, we are done, we are fully constrained. And the only thing I don't like about this is that our measurements are ugly as hell. But you know what? I can live with that. So now let's turn on our pad again. So we'll click here with spacebar. We'll go back to our sketch here, clicky. And now let's pad this guy out using the pad, of course. Now, since our offset here was about 20 millimeters, uh, let's set that here. Or, you know what, maybe let's just go 16 millimeters. Since our ball is 14 millimeters wide, and there you go. You now have a completed maze. And if you want to get rid of this line that separates this from the outside here, of course, what you can do is click on pad, your refine, which is right here and change that to true. I'll click on it here, drop it to true, then right click on your pad and go to recompute object. And that will set it all as one piece. All right, guys, that's it. I hope your maze is looking amazing. We have a tradition on this channel where we always sign off a toast to your good health. So from my house to yours, Nazdrovia. Oh man, that's good scotch. I love Sparta Spark Labias.